All right, let's get started, and we'll start with the Bears. There was something that you said, and it's so true. It's the, the thing that 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 pisses me off with the Bears. Everyone wanted to know who the OC was going to be. Never mind the GM. Never mind the head coach who was supposed to work in concert. Nothing has worked in concert with these hires as far as I'm concerned for the Chicago Bears. Give me your thoughts there. We'll start there. Yeah, great point. Thank you for bringing that up, Brian. Basically, I was just disappointed a bit because throughout the entire hiring process, we were all so enamored. We were concerned about who's the head coach going to be, who's the GM going to be, are they going to be like Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy, different, similar? Are they going to be offensive-minded? What are they going to do to improve the team? We hire both these guys, the parents hire both these guys, and then all of a sudden, the focus shifts to the offensive coordinator. It's like everybody kind of conceded. You know, they conceded and said, well, let's focus to something else. And then we'll focus on this guy and that guy and this guy. And I thought the whole point of this was to focus on the head coach. I thought the head coach was supposed to come in, fix Justin Fields, number one, and fix this team, number two. And instead, we got a situation where, sure, everybody's happy. Everyone's cautiously optimistic. That's been the word that I've heard mostly from a lot of fans who watch my shows. But more than anything, we see people freaking out, getting excited about Luke Getze. Now, look. I'm, all, I'm, I'm fine with that. I mean, that's acceptable. He's supposed to be a pretty good offensive mind passing game coordinator for the Packers. I just didn't like that people didn't really hold the organization accountable enough for their hires. And I'm not saying Eberflus is going to be bad or Poles is going to be bad. But again, for the past three weeks uh, during that hiring process, the emphasis was head coach. Get an offensive mind. Find Justin Fields some help. At the end of the day, they didn't do that. Uh, no. They hired somebody with no experience who was a defensive mind. Maybe he works, and that's great. But people should be holding this team accountable instead of going, well, let's move on to the offensive coordinator, see what he could do. Uh, people should have been more, not even enraged, but just hold this team more accountable for the actions that they've made. They certainly haven't deserved nor earned trust from their public and from their fans over the past 10, 15, 20 years. I mean, even ever since the Super Bowl, really, when well, they won in 1985. So these are things, small things that, Maybe don't matter to a lot of people. Everyone's so happy about these new hires and this new change and this new feeling at Alice Hall. But these are things that stick with me. And, you know, if no one else is going to call them out. I'll make sure I do. Yeah, same here. Same here. I mean, I've watched this organization just disintegrate. Even uh, even during the 2006 season, that team quickly, quickly disintegrated after they went to the Super Bowl and they got smacked around by the Indianapolis Colts and there was no accountability whatsoever. Everybody was just so happy that the Chicago Bears got to the Super Bowl. I mean, I thought the focus was was on winning the darn thing. You did in 85 with a dominant team, but how fast did that team disintegrate? Now, and you made another great point, it's, it just seems like Ryan Poles was brought in, put puppet strings on, and he was handed a list that he didn't make up, and he was forced to choose from that list. That's where all this started. you got to remember this, too, Brian, and this is pretty interesting. I found this out the day after Eber Flutes was hired. Eber Flutes and Poles have the same agent. What do you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, there are just too many ties here. And, again, I'm not saying that these guys are going to be bad. You know, we right. don't know anything yet. But it's fishy for sure, the process that went into hiring both of them. I didn't like it. I wish there could have been more transparency. And more than that, mm -hmm. I wish there could have been more options. Yeah. As you said correctly, Poles was given a list. So people say, oh, hey, Poles made the list. No, no, no. He was given a list. These mm -hmm. interviews were done in concert with his interview. Yep. So when he was hired, the Bears had already done a number of head coaching interviews. There were finalists named before Poles was hired. That mm -hmm. should already tell you that this was not his list. And I no. get it, okay, it was his decision from those three, but why not interview other people? Why not expand the search of it? Now that you're GM, hey, let's bring back Brian Dable for a second interview. Let's bring back Leslie Frazier for another interview. I'm not exactly. saying he's the best guy for the job, but bring mm -hmm. in other people and get your own perspective on them. Now that you're the GM, he didn't do that. He was handed a list. Then they told him essentially pick from who you want from these three. Well, there could have been many more candidates and many more options had you been given the ability to interview those candidates and those options, he didn't. And that's another thing that scared me. And the other thing is, for, that's, that's another thing that scared me. And the other thing is, for me, before all the craziness went down, why didn't you call Brian Flores? <laughs> exactly. You know, here's, here's my problem with Brian Flores. I mean, lost to decide. Let's talk about him as a coach. Mm -hmm. um, 
I don't think he's horrible. I think he played somewhat of a role when it came to Tua Tunga Bailoa's um, development and how it didn't really go according to plan. And I wish I, the best for Tua. I hope that he can develop into the quarterback that Miami needs. Mm-hmm. That was my only quip with Flores himself. Obviously a leader. Mm-hmm. Obviously a guy that his players like to play for and respected. That was great. My only concern was Tua uh, because, you know, we just had a Mitch Trubisky problem here with Pat right. Nagy. I didn't want the same thing to happen to Justin Fields. That was my main concern. Uh, but obviously now with all this news coming out and all these bombshell allegations from Flores himself, it was, you know, it's pretty apparent that maybe it wasn't only him who was responsible for the demise of Tua and the demise of that team. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I think that uh, he sh- certainly should have gotten at least a second interview. I mean, he's, He's a qualified candidate. You know, he, I hate to say it, but it's true. He has more qualifications statistically and truthfully than Matt Eberflus. I mean, he's coached in the NFL for three years as a head coach, uh, brought Miami, you know, near the playoffs. I mean, he's not necessarily a bad coach, and he has some proven results uh, to his name. So, you know, before all this lawsuit stuff came out, if we're just talking about straight-up credentials and numbers, he certainly did warrant a second interview. You know, and the fact that he didn't get a second interview should tell you something right there, part one, especially with how the Chicago Bears handled this hire. It's like we discussed this a moment ago. Uh, Ryan Poles was given a list, was asked to choose from that list, was given no opportunity. So I said this on my show, and I'm pretty sure you've heard it. There's puppet strings right there given to Ryan Poles. They they sat him in, they they made him smile, they took pictures, and when the pictures stopped, they put puppet strings on him, and here you go with the coaching list. <laughs> I mean, that's very possible. I don't know what extent, for sure. You know, we, don't, we all don't know the extent to which the Bears had an influence, but I agree in the sense that he only had three names. I mean, that's, that's the obvious point. Should have been given more names. Should have been given more of an opportunity to interview other people. The fact that he came in, and this is proof, and I said this before and I'll say it again, the fact that he came in, Brian, and had three finalists already deemed yep. by Bears executives and by the media. I mean, I made a video two days before it was hired talking about the finalists. So the mm-hmm. fact that there were finalists before the GM was hired should already tell you there's a problem. That means that he didn't interview them, obviously. It wasn't the GM yet. So he didn't interview them. So the people who interviewed them, at least initially, were George McCaskey, Bill Polian, and Ted Phillips. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so that should, that should scare some people, at least, when it comes to how this process went. Now, you know, reportedly there was some tension when it came to choosing from the three, and Polian wanted uh, Brian Quinn, yep. and, or Dan Quinn, and, um, you know, Pulse, Pulse said no, and he ended up choosing Eberflus, and hey, you know, kudos to him. Mm-hmm. When you think about the fact that they share the same agent, well, then there's kind of a conflict of interest there, too. So we really don't know. Whether or not this was the right choice, we're going to find out soon, of course. Yeah, we are. The new season starts and gets kicked off. But there were certainly questions and cause for concern when it came to this entire process. And, you know, I I wish there could have been more transparency, and there wasn't. And my only hope is that this works out because Bears Bears fans have been patient for a long time. They've waited a long time. They've been through a number of regime changes just in the past decade. Uh, No one wants to see this happen again. At this point, there need to be results. And hopefully, Poles and Eberflus are going to be the right choices.